Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development to give you an updated walkthrough of the Maps for NetSuite BFN approved suite app. This video is being recorded in February 2022 using version 3.6.8 of the suite app on NetSuite version 2022.1. So what is Maps for NetSuite? Put simply, the suite app is a Google Maps integration for NetSuite. The purpose of the suite app is to allow users to quickly map groups of customers, vendors, and transactions on a standard Google map within the NetSuite environment. Users control what is shown on the map by using predefined save searches or by specifying filter criteria on the fly. Now a quick note on the version history here. Maps for NetSuite was previously known as Suite Maps, which has been around for about 10 years now. If you're just getting started with the Suite app, I recommend watching the previous Maps for NetSuite demo video from February 2021, where I go over a lot of the basic features. This video today is meant to be a follow-on where we go through some newer features. So here's what this video is going to go over. First, as usual, I'll start from scratch and show you how easy it is to install the Suite app. Then we'll start off with a simple test mapping to see the improved geocoding process. Next, we'll take a look at doing a radius-based search and the new You Are Here indicator. Then we'll look at an example of how to set up a heat map. After that, we'll see an example of how to use the Record Plugins tab to map event records. Then we'll see how to find and load in a KML map overlay showing all the U.S. counties. Then we'll take a look at the new Store Locator suite that can be used on your company website. Finally, I'll show you how to find the Maps documentation PDF in case you need further help. Without further delay, let's look at Maps for NetSuite. So as I mentioned, we're starting from scratch here. I don't even have the Suite app installed. So to install it, let's go to the Suite Apps tab. Just type in Maps here in the search box. Click on the result and click this blue Install button. This should take about a minute or so. Okay, so when it's finished, you should have this new map center tab in your menu that you can use to get to your map records. Let's get started with a new map. Now first, I want to mention that I'm actually in the UK, and I'd like the map to default to showing England, so let's adjust that. Let's go to Setup, Company, General Preferences. If I scroll down to Custom Preferences, we can set the maps country to display to United Kingdom. There's also an option here to use kilometers for radius searches instead of miles. So I'll save that. Then we'll go back to a new map. All right, that's better. Now before we go any farther, let's do a simple test search mapping to make sure the basics are working here. I'm going to map the results from the UK customers search. Now a word about performance. Plotting the results on a map requires a process called geocoding, which takes the address on the record and converts it to latitude and longitude coordinates. It takes a fraction of a second for each address to be geocoded here. As the suite app is geocoding them, it's storing the latitude and longitude on the customer records so that next time they'll map instantly. In recent versions of the suite app, we've made some pretty substantial improvements to the geocoding process as well as the user feedback. So the geocoding process runs quite a bit quicker now than it did in previous versions. And now if I click on any of the map marker icons, I can see the details of this customer. So that confirms the basics are working. Now let's look at something more interesting. First we'll do a radius-based search example. Let's do a radius search based on where I am currently. Perhaps I want to see if there's any customers within 25 miles of where I'm at. First notice as soon as I enter the radius, the browser asks if it can use my location. Make sure to click allow, otherwise this won't work. Next I'm going to set this your location color to black so we can see where I'm at. Now I'll click map results. So we can see where I am. I'm the black arrow. So it looks like there's a customer right near me and also one farther away. So depending on if I want a short drive or a long drive, I can go visit one of them. Now let's look at how to do a heat map. Let's say you don't care about the exact location of your customers, but you're more interested in concentrations, so seeing them as a heat map would be ideal. 
To switch to heat map mode, we just need to change the map info content record. So I'm going to open up this record here. We'll edit it. I'm going to change the name to heat map. And we'll check this heat map checkbox here. And I'll do a save as. So now back on my map, I'll refresh the record to get this list to update and set it to heat map. And for my data, let's map uh, Western US customers, since I know I have more there. So. so when I do, we'll see that we get this nice little concentration of customers here on the west coast of the US and we can zoom in to see that more in detail. So now let's refresh and take a look at how to use the Record Plugins tab. Using this tab, you can map any record in NetSuite as long as it has latitude-longitude fields. So for example, calendar events. First I need to enter the record type ID here, which is calendar event. The record name field is used for how they'll show up on the map, so for events, it's just title. My latitude field is cust event latitude. My longitude field is cust event longitude. Now if I map my Robbie test event search, we'll see that apparently I have some meetings in the Bay Area. So I better get to booking my flights. Now let's take a look at how to use the map overlays field. So if you're pretty technical, you might be able to create your own KML files using Google Earth or other tools like that. KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language and it's an open source platform. I'm not that technical, so I like to use the ones that someone else has already created. If we just Google KML overlay US counties, we should find some. Here we are, the US Census Bureau publishes KMLs. Now I know that Google Maps does have a file size limitation on KML files, so I'm going to take this middle resolution option for US counties that's 2 megabytes. So now back on our map, we can click to create a new overlay. We'll give it a name. and we need to upload this file. Now I think we can just upload it straight as a zip file, so let's try that. But this is important. When you're uploading it, make sure to check this available without login checkbox, otherwise Google won't be able to read the file properly. Now I'll save my map overlay. And let's go look at the United States. Now I'll mention that these KMLs don't always work perfectly on the first click. I've had instances where I load them in, I can't get it to work, but then I come back five minutes later and it loads just fine. So I might try refreshing the page and then reload it here. Basically, as soon as you click on the overlay, you should see it populate on the map. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and my overlay still isn't working, so I just googled Google Maps KML file size limit and we see that it's 5 megabytes, but that's for the KML file itself. Now we downloaded a zip, and if I unzip that, we see that the KML is actually 10 megabytes. So even though the zip file is only 2, that KML was compressed pretty significantly. So that means we do need to use the smaller zip file here from the US Census Bureau. So I'm going to download this smaller one, and now we'll try adding that in here. I'm going to call it US Counties Smaller. So this file is only 751 kilobytes. Make sure to check available without login. 
save that. And there we go. I just had to click off of it and click back on it and then it loads instantly. And you can click on any of these counties and the KML overlay actually has a lot of details about it. Okay, now, I didn't actually mention this on the slide earlier, but what we're going to look at next is how to add your own custom filter field down here. So for example, if you have custom fields on your customer records that are very important and you want to be able to dynamically filter on them, you can add any field you want down here in the filters area. So let's look at an example on my customer. I'm just going to open a customer record here. And let's say that I have a field here on the custom tab, this product applications area. Let's say this is really important and I want to filter based on this. I'm going to need this field ID, custom entity product application. I'm going to save this. And now to get a field here, the first thing we actually need to do is edit the map record type itself and add a field. So I'm going to go to my record types, and notice the map record is not locked specifically for this reason. So here I can just click New Field, and we'll call it Product Application Area, just like the Customer field. I'll give it an ID. And it is important that the type of the field matches the one of your customer field. So it's a list of product application areas. I'll go ahead and save that. So now back on my map. The field exists, but there's one more step in order to link this field to the one in your customer. So go to the Maps menu and go to Custom Field Mappings and click New. Now here, the name of the record needs to be the ID of the field you created on the map. The entity field needs to be the field from your customer record. So let me get this field ID for the one I just created. And finally, the search operator. This tells it how to filter it on searches. So since this is a select field, we're going to use the any of operator. If it was just a text field, that's where we would use is, is not, or contains. And if it was a numeric field, that's when we would use greater than, less than, equal to, etc. So I type in any of here, and it shouldn't matter if you have the space or if you don't. So now I'll save that. And so I set this customer's product application to area 50. So let's try searching for customers whose product application area is Area 50. There we go. Now it looks like we have two actually, one here in the UK and one over there in California. So great, so that actually works. Okay, now finally I'm going to show you a new suitelet that we've added in that can be used as a store lo locator on your company website. To get started, just type in Maps Store Locator in your global search and click New. Here we go, New HITC Maps Store Locator Suitelet. Now let's take a look at the Parameters tab. The idea is that this works off of a saved search that you define. This can be a search on locations or customers, for example. I have a search called Our US Locations. Let me show you what this search looks like. This is just a search showing my locations that are in the United States that have a latitude defined. And importantly, on the results, you do need to include the latitude and longitude fields here. So with that, we do need to define what the IDs of the latitude and longitude fields are. For locations, it's just latitude and longitude. 
Now if you're just starting this off, it's probably good to leave it in testing. But if you do want it to go live, what you do is you'll set the status to released and you'll set the execute as role to administrator and available without login. So let's save this. And so this would be this external URL is the URL that you would take and use as an iframe on your website. So if I click on this, this is what people would see on the website. They can see my two locations and click on them. Pretty cool. Okay, so finally I want to mention that if you need any further information, you can find the MAPS documentation PDF anytime by just entering in HITC hyphen maps into your global search. The PDF file should be the only result. This document shows what changes in each version of the suite app, and it also talks about important things like what permissions are required and how to go through some of the processes. And that concludes the tour of Maps for NetSuite. At Head in the Cloud Development, we're always looking for ideas to make our products better. Please get in touch if you have any comments or questions. You can email us at gurus at headinthecloud.dev.com or contact us through our website at www.headinthecloud.dev.com. We'll see you at Sweet World. Thanks for watching.